Once upon a time, in a wood outside Athens, over on in Titania, the king and queen of the fairies were talking about a little changeling boy. They could not agree on who should look after the little boy. Titania had promised his mother she would look after him, but Oberon wanted him to be his page boy. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. For her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. Oberon decided to play a trick on Titania, so that she would love the first living thing she saw when she next woke up. Oberon called his servant Puck to him and asked him to fetch a little purple flower with an unusual name called Love in Idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Oberon hoped that once Puck squeezed the juice of the flower onto Titania's eyelids, she would care less for the changeling boy and let Oberon adopt him as his page boy. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oak flits and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. While Titania slept hidden in her flowery bower, a weaver called Nick Bottom came to practice a play with his friends. They were going to perform the play at the wedding of Theseus, Duke of Athens. Park watched Bottom and his friends as they acted out the play near where Titania slept. What hemp and homespun to be swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? Park thought he would play a trick on Bottom to help with Oberon's plan to fool Titania. He put a donkey's head onto Bottom without even noticing. Bottom's friends were frightened when they saw him so changed. Oh, monstrous! How oh, strange! We're haunted! Pray, masters, fly, monsters, help! Oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do you see? You see an asset of your own, do you? Bottom's friends ran away from him, but Bottom sang to himself to show that he was not frightened of being left alone in the as he had a donkey's head, his singing sounded like the hee-haw of a donkey. The noise he made awoke Titania. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. On the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. As Oberon had hoped, Titania had fallen in love with the first living thing she saw when she woke up. Titania ordered her fairies, peas blossom, cobweb, moth and mustard seed, to wait upon bottom. Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries with purple grapes, green figs and mulberries and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him elves and do him courtesies. Later, the fairies left Titania and Bottom unguarded to sleep in the flowery bower. Oberon crept up upon them. As Titania had agreed earlier that Oberon could adopt the changeling boy as his page boy, he now felt sorry for his queen and for the mischief he had done. He squeezed the juice of the little purple flower onto her eyelids to release her from the spell. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamoured of an ass. 
Once Oberon and Titania had made up, Puck removed the donkey's head from Nick Bottom. Bottom woke up and thought he had had a very silly dream. But he couldn't be sure, so he made his way home to his friends. Oi! I've had a most rare vision. Why have had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was? At the wedding of Theseus, Duke of Athens, Bottom and his friends performed their play Pyramus and Thisbe for the guests. As well as the newly married couple of Theseus and his bride Apollota, there were two other happy couples in the audience. They all enjoyed the play and stayed up until midnight watching it. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers, to bed, tis almost fairy time. Meanwhile, Titania and Oberon, with all the fairies at their side, came and blessed the palace, and then returned to fairyland. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding, but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend.